paraphrasing from The Noble Savage, to the professional art critic, my comments regarding Gauguin's art will seem elementary, and it's because I'm not a professional art critic. And this presentation is not for the critics, but for all of us who are inspired by a work of art and want to know more about the artist behind them. Paul Gauguin is not the man that he's widely assumed to be. I believe he is far more interesting and has been severely misjudged. From the casual observer, Kagan appears to be a man who quits his lucrative position as a stockbroker, abandons his wife and their five children, and runs off to an island paradise to paint. But this is not the true legacy of Kagan, as I hope to demonstrate. My wish is that you leave here with a more compassionate understanding and a deeper appreciation for the true genius that is Paul Gauguin. Eugene Henri Paul Gauguin Most remembered for his vivid scenes of Tahitian life, an artist who explored numerous mediums. He painted in oils and sketched in pastel, ink, he painted in watercolor, sketched in charcoal, created in ceramics, chiseled marble, and carved wood. He was an early printmaker and a voluminous writer, finding his own periodical and publishing his journals from Tahiti. He was also an art collector, collecting the works of his contemporaries from Renoir to Manet, Diga, Bernard, Schaffnecker, and Camille Pizarro, who would be Gauguin's mentor. Born June 7, 1848, to radical journalist Clovis Gauguin and Aline Maria Chazal, daughter of feminist socialist leader Flora Tristan. In 1851, the family left the political tensions of France for Lima, Peru. Sadly, Clovis Gauguin would die mid-voyage, leaving three-year-old Paul, his sister and mother, to face new relatives in a strange land. Peru in the 1800s counted some 67 places of worship. Ornate churches, many in the Spanish Baroque style, dotted the skyline. The religious imagery, icons, and statues would play a role in Gauguin's later art. In 1855, the family returns to Orleans, France. <laughs>